Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and by Metcalf Trucking Company. Today we sit down with the head coach of the Poen Indians, Vic Barrett. This Pigskin Preview is sponsored by First Community Bank. All right, I'm here with uh, Coach Vic Barrett. He's the head football coach here at Owen High School. Um, coach, this is a pretty small school in a small town. Um, you guys, uh, but you guys have a really nice facility out there, a brand new yeah. Um, sports complex. Um, so tell me about the, the support that this uh, that this town and this community give to your football team on every Friday night. I'm going into year 13 here and I said it when I first got here one of the reasons I wanted to come here is because I played for a school in the area and whenever we played Poland the, the fans were there they were rowdy they were passionate they loved their kids they loved their school they loved their community and that's not changed, you know. When we when we play in anything on Friday night, Thursday night, there's going to be the bleachers are going to be full. People are going to be yelling and supporting us. And then anything we ever need, the the community rallies. And you know, if I ask for something, they're going to pop in, and we're going to have food or whatever it is that we ask for. And you just you can't you can't ever question their loyalty and their support. You know, we. A couple of years ago, we're in the playoffs, and we get back after midnight, and they're lining the roads out here for us, you know, honking, lost in the semifinals, and they were still there. And they're not just there when we win, but they're there in the tough times and the and and the good times. So you just can't. It, it's second to none. It's the best community in the state, if you ask me. So tell me about um, what you guys try to implement in your players um, on a day to day basis. What you guys try to push. In practice and get your team um, do it do what you have to do to get your team um, kind of in that that um, winning state of mind you mentioned that you've been to the semifinals a couple years ago so obviously this is a team with some recent success you guys were in the playoffs last year too so tell me about what you guys do to try to get there every year we just work hard you know our kids we, we build it on, on working hard we don't do all the fancy stuff and come up with all the mottos and and all the retreats and all that stuff. We we get in that weight room and we work, man. And 365 days a year, we're going to be lifting weights and we're going to be moving heavy weight. And, and that's where I think you, you build camaraderie and and trust your teammates and see who's going to be there for you whenever it, whenever it's hard. You know, we can go to retreat and have fun and everybody loves it and while well, we're lovey-dovey. But when you're working hard, when you're sweating, when you're hurting, when you're tired, that's when it comes into where you find out who you can count on. And that's what our guys build it around. You know, we, we're in the weight room hard. We're running hard. We're always working. We don't waste a lot of time. We may not be up here as long as a lot of teams will be because we get in there, we get after it, and we get out of here. I, I want them to be kids. I want them to have a summer, and I want them to, you know, be able to work jobs and have family time. And just they know when we show up here, it's time to get to work. And then that's going to correlate to Friday nights. We're never going to be the most athletic team you'll see on Friday night, but we want to be the toughest kids you play against and the cleanest kids you play against and just play hard in those football. So tell me about um, your roster um, and tell me about, you know, uh, you, you guys had a lot of, a lot of guys who, uh, who graduated who were contributors for you last year. Um, so tell me about some guys that you're relying on to be – leaders for your team and some guys who you think will, will step up their game and, and uh, maybe fill in for some of those seniors that you guys lost? We, we lost a bunch of linemen, a bunch of big linemen that have been two, three-year starters. So we're going to fill that void. We've got we've got a good group of kids coming in that, you know, Carter Felty will step in. He'll be a junior. He'll play tackle for us and fill in for a guy we lost last year that was a three-year starter. So that's always scary. But we've got our – we got Caden Schuff back. He plays left guard for us, and you know he's just a—he's what you call a war daddy, man. He just goes, he gets after it, he plays every snap of the game on both sides of the ball, and you know you can look out there and his calves will be knotted up and cramping, and he's still going. And so that, that's what our program's based on. And then 
Logan Elrod will be a three-year starter at center. He's back. Um, then we'll have some sophomores that we're counting on to step up to fill some other voids. Uh, but at left tackle, Landon Crosby, he's a two-year starter on defense. He'll probably play a little both ways this year. But, you know, we're looking forward to that challenge. Those guys have the mindset that they're going to, like, we, like I just said, they're in that weight room right now, and they're getting after it, putting on weight, getting stronger, and they're, they're ready for the challenge. And then the skill positions, you know, we, we lost our leading rusher, Kevin Freeman, who had really came along at the end of the season last year and did more than I ever expected him to as a running back. But we'll tackle that with Austin Harness and Alejandro Guzman. They both played some last year. Alejandro had a few more carries than Austin. But Austin's probably one of the quickest kids I've, I've ever coached, you know, in the box. He's not like a blinding fast guy in the 40. But, man, he sees the field and he can hit it. And he hits a crease and he's gone. Alejandro, we call him Sumo. He's just he's your little short bowling ball guy that's going to get those tough yards, tough physical yards. So I look forward to those two guys handling that. And then at receiver, I feel like we're as talented all around at receivers we've ever been. You know, we've got six or eight guys that we feel like can play. Obviously, we've got to replace uh, Braden Hull. He's a big, long, fast receiver. Had had some big games last year for us as a deep threat. Had a great game in the playoffs. You know, we came up short, but I don't know. He he had probably 120 yards receiving in that game. So he's hard to hard to replace. But you know, we got a a kid came out of basketball this year. He's never played. Bo Batchelor. He's a he's a college type basketball player, and he's out and he's had a great spring and a great summer so far. He's 6'4 jumper with soft hands. You know, he's still learning football, but so far he's been great this summer. And then Gage Brewer, he was our second leading receiver last year. He's he's that Wes Welker type kid. He just makes the tough catches, gets the tough yards, and, and does things right. You can always count on him. And Sutter Spear and Trenton Russell have both came on this summer. Trenton will be a senior, Sutter will be a junior, and they're both just possession type receivers that can make the big catches in traffic and keep drives alive. So I'm, I'm really excited about him. And then at quarterback, Colt Barrett comes back. He's 6'6", six, six, about 200 pounds, and he's got, a, he's got an arm on him. And more importantly, he's got, he's got a brain for football. You know, he understands the game as well as I do. I mean, he's my son. He's, been, he's learned our offense from the time he decided he liked football. You know, he's a third grader. He asked for a playbook for Christmas. So that's just the kind of kid he is. He loves football. and. He's always working at it, and I look for him to have a big year, and he's got to really, really be a leader for us on and off the field and, and keep people moving in the right direction. So um, tell me about what you want the identity of your team to be. Obviously, you've spoken a little bit about physicality and, and leadership. So you know, tell me what um, you want coaches or people who watch your team might not be familiar with, with Owen football. Uh, what do you want them to say whenever they watch your team at the end of the game? man, they're going to hit you, you know, and that's what, you know, we're, we'll be in the spread. We've always been in some form of the spread, but at the end of the day, we're going to line up and find a way to run the football. And I, when people get ready for us, I want them to have to spend every resource available to stop us from running the football. And then in turn, that opens up our passing game to give us matchups. You know, we want to be physical. Offensively and defensively, we want to hit you in the mouth, but we want to be clean. We're going to play between the whistles. We want to be physical. When you walk off the field, we want you to feel like you've been in a 10 round boxing match with, with us and that, that we won. You know, that's what we want. That's what I want coaches to say is, man, they are a physical, disciplined group of kids and, and they're tough to play. So offensively, uh, you mentioned that you guys are a spread team. Yes. Um, so tell me about, you know, you mentioned that you want to be able to open up the passing game with, with your physical kind of running game. No. So. Tell me about um, just how your offense kind of works, what fans might need to know about it, and uh, what your expectation is for that group this year. We're, we're going to run the ball to open up the pass. That's what, you know, anybody, any coach will tell you there's nothing more demoralizing than somebody lining up getting three to four yards of play and just running it down your throat. So that's what we try to establish first. You know, sometimes you're going to be outmanned up front, and that's not it. And then we will use the passing game to try to pull people out of the box and – and take advantage of the numbers there. But our number one goal is to really take what you give us as a defense. If you're going to give us a seven-man box, we're going to throw the football. 
if you give us a six man box, we're gonna run the football. So we're we're gonna count numbers offensively and try to figure out what gives us an advantage. And again, I'm hard headed sometimes. And sometimes I'm gonna if you give me an eight man box, dang it, we're gonna just run the football at you to try to just to try to create that mentality early in the game of they're gonna run the football at us and we gotta stop it. Tell me about your defense um, and what your expectation is for them. Um, you know, you guys, um, you guys, like you mentioned, you're going to try to be a physical group on both sides of the ball. So just tell me about uh, what you expect from your defense this season. It's the same thing. You know, when, when people play us, I want them to say they're going to be gap sound. They're going to play their responsibilities. They're going to read their keys. And for you to beat us, then you're going to have to be perfect on offense. And then we're going to be great tacklers. And when we get to make the tackle, we're going to punish you as a ball carrier. You know, and that sounds kind of violent, but football's violent. We want to punish the ball carrier and not make it where they don't want to run the football anymore. Make it where they don't want to catch the ball anymore. Make the quarterback be thinking more about getting hit by a D lineman or a linebacker in pressures than they are making the correct read and things like that. And we, we, you know, we preach 11 hats to the ball, 11 purple hats. You know, we want to see 11 purple hats fly into the football wherever it is on the field. If it, when they snap the ball, we want to get 11 hats to the football and tackle with 11 guys. So tell me about what your schedule looks like this year, um, your, <clears throat> your, your non-conference and, and why it's scheduled that way. And then tell me about, uh, you know, there's obviously some conference realignment in the off season. Oh. So tell me about um, what your conference looks like and uh, maybe some games that you expect to be um, to, that would challenge your team in conference. In, in non-conference, we, I'll be honest, after the last two years of travel in Southwest Arkansas, I look for close close games, you know, to, to limit some of our travel. And just, it got old, we were driving. Our shortest trip was to Mount Ida, and it was an hour and 40 minutes. So we look for closer games, more local games, to get better gates and help with funding and stuff like that. So. That's what we look for first. And then, you know, we look for teams around and then, you know, Cutter was coming out of eight man and wanted to play and Mountain Pine the same thing. So those are old conference foes for us. And we were like, that'd be great, great gates, close an hour away or within an hour. So we picked those two games up. Coach Scott at Mountain Pine, we play them week zero. And he's a great coach. I've worked with him, I'm good friends with him. So you know they're gonna be a good, well-coached team that prepares you for conference. Same thing with Cutter, you know, Coach Finley, I, he was actually my center in high school. So I, I know how the program he runs. And again, they're gonna be disciplined, well-coached. And that's what we wanna see is, is well-coached teams that are gonna challenge us to get better. And then we play Magnet uh, week three, I think. So, or week two, and that that's a big rivalry game for us. And so we're always gonna play that game. That's where I'm from. And my brother, our defensive coordinator is from there and it's, it's just turned into a good, fun game, and and it's going to get us ready. Magnet's always going to be good. I don't if people say they're going to have a down year or up year, it doesn't matter. Magnet's magnet, and they're going to be disciplined, hard nosed football kids that know how to play the game, and that's just going to prepare us for the conference. And when it comes to the conference, I'm honestly clueless. You know, <laughs> everybody's new. We've played Hampton the past year or two, and we played Baptist Prep. Other than that, it's going to be kind of a learn as we go to see. What's going on? I, we played Hazen in the playoffs two years in a row, but they don't have those same kids anymore. So I, I don't know. You know, we're going to look at – we're a week-by-week week team. So when we get to week four for conference play, we're going to tackle that game and get to work on it. And We'll be paying attention to scores and films and stuff that we see throughout the weeks, but it'll it's going to be a learning experience for, for us as coaches and our players because we're used to seeing the same teams every year. Mm -hmm. You guys, um, you guys just hosted a seven on seven, right? Yeah. Um, tell me what some of your takeaways were from that, from your team, and maybe from some other teams that um, that were there and were uh, out there um, uh, participating. We had fourteen schools here Friday, and it, it was a great turnout. Bismarck ended up winning it, and three A better look out. Bismarck's just gonna be really salty. They their skill kids are as good as anybody's. They they are. They are impressive. I was telling our coaches after the end of the game, the thing that stuck out to me is they're so disciplined. And at the end of the day, it was four o'clock. They've been playing all day in the heat and those kids were still running their routes as fast and as hard as they were in the first game. So they just got that mentality that they're gonna wear you down. You're not gonna wear them down and they're gonna, 
they're going to give people some fit this year. So I look for them to be really good. Two uh, A Mineral Springs was there. They're loaded with athletes, and Coach Hathcock does a great job with them. You know, I know he wants to get out. He's kind of had a first round jinx here lately, and they're working on that. And I figure he'll get them out of that. And they they look good. Carlisle looked great. You know, I think they were in the semis, and Bismarck beat them out of the tournament in the semis. But again, great great looking kids and they'll be in our conference obviously but I, I don't know if they'll be in the spread or more run downhill run the ball type thing so a lot of good teams were here Friday and you know it was good to see them and good to see us small schools out here working and getting better um, last question for you um, what would it what would your uh, expectation be for this team what would what would your team have to do this season for you to be able to walk away and, and, and be satisfied with the result uh, I always just want to compete. You know, obviously you can ask anybody who knows me, I want to win in anything I do. If we're playing pickup sticks, I'm going to figure out a way to win. And, but competing is what gives you the chance to win. You know, you got to go out every week, prepare to compete and come out and play hard every game and give yourself a chance. And we're never satisfied with just making the playoffs. You know, early on in the, in the building of the program that, you know, we just wanted to get in now we're we're never satisfied if we're not in making it past the first round, you know. And after that, you're just you're thankful to be playing. And again, you you prepare yourself to go compete. You're going to play good teams, and and so to me, that's what that's what a successful season in the wins and loss column would be. And and then just overall, as our kids be our kids just be good football players and good kids. You know, like I said earlier, play hard, work hard, be physical, and and play clean, hard-nosed football and, and enjoy the game that we get to be a part of. All right, this has been an interview with Coach Vic Barrett here at uh, Poen High School. Coach, is there anything that you want to say about your program before we sign off here? No, sir, just roll tribe. All right, I'm Carson Ward with Arkansas Sports Network. You can find Arkansas Sports Network on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.